Thank you, Mr. Harmon. Mr. Hall, Mr. Raper, Mrs. Pearson, school board, parents, friends, and fellow graduates. I am honored to receive this award. It is supposed to represent spiritual maturity, Christian service, academic commitment, and student leadership. This might sound cheesy, but I truly think our class has demonstrated all of these traits well this year. We've all grown together, and it has been amazing to watch. I want to thank my family. Dad, you have supported me through everything and pushed me to be my best. You have always been my biggest fan. Mom, I cannot remember a time when you were not there for me. You have always been a source of laughter and a shoulder to cry on. Looking back, I realized how wise you both are and that you were usually right. I guess hindsight is 2020. Matthew, you have never failed to show me love, even when I don't deserve it. Thank you for playing Barbies with me when we were little, although I didn't give you much of a choice. <laughs> Maxwell, you have always kept my life fast-paced and interesting. Thank you for consistently brightening my day and making me laugh. I would not be the same person I am today without my family. They all said this day would come, but I don't think any of us expected it to come this fast. The memories we made in high school will stay with us forever. This is a double-edged sword because there are a lot of great memories we made in high school, but there are also the embarrassing memories we'd all just rather forget. Either way, we will remember these past four years forever. Seniors, I'd like to congratulate each of you on everything you've accomplished. I think we have left some pretty big shoes to fill. As seniors, it was our job to lead the student body. And if I'm being honest, I had my doubts about our class. However, looking back on this year, I could not be more impressed with the students with whom I'm graduating. You have all been leaders around the school in different capacities, and it has been incredible to see your impact on others. Whether or not you realize it, each and every one of you has had some kind of effect on your fellow students, and that is something to be proud of. Faculty, you are some of the most patient people I know. It takes a very patient person to spend all day with high school students who think they know everything. You have truly invested in our lives and loved us. You offered guidance, support, and humor when we needed it. I don't think we can thank you enough for everything you've done for us. Whether or not you realize it, you have been extremely influential in our lives, and that is something to be proud of. Parents, this day is for you too. You have believed in us, advised us, and loved us, probably a lot more than we even realized. We definitely haven't made your job easy, but despite all the challenges, you have been wonderful parents. This graduating class is evidence of all your hard work. You have raised some pretty incredible kids, and that is something to be proud of. When I look at you, my classmates, I see future doctors, lawyers, pastors, engineers, teachers, and maybe even a politician or two. Our futures can seem exciting, yet scary, as the future is full of unknowns. We are going to face challenges we have never faced before, encounter people we have never met before, and experience situations we have never experienced before. It won't be easy, and we will have to work hard, but I have a feeling that those difficult experiences are going to teach us valuable lessons for life. High school seemed terrifying to us as 8th graders, and it was challenging at times, but we adapted. We learned how to work hard, we learned how to lead, and we learned how to seek truth. So as we look to the future, we shouldn't be afraid of the unknowns. Instead, we should search for opportunities that will allow us to grow. There's a question that many people struggle to answer. What is truth? The way we choose to answer this question is extremely important. Our answer will impact our thoughts and actions. We can choose to say that truth is absolute, unchanging, and found in scripture. Or we could choose to say that truth is relative, circumstantial, and found in ourselves or in our experiences. The way we choose to view truth is crucial to how we are going to live our lives. Our society views truth in the light of relativism, changing with circumstances. This is a much more comfortable way to, comfortable way to live because there is no accountability or guilt. However, that was not the way we were designed to live our lives. Truth is revealed clearly through the Word of God. Jesus Christ is the personification of truth. Truth is not defined by different people in different situations. It cannot change based on the circumstance. God's truth is absolute. Our generation is known for being tolerant and accepting. If we choose to view truth as concrete, we will be in the minority. We will be called oppressive, intolerable, and closed-minded. The world will constantly try to persuade us to believe a different way. We will be bombarded with false truths and it will be uncomfortable to be different. But we were never called to be comfortable. 
When we choose to follow God, we are going to stand up. That is inevitable. We are called to stand firm in the truth. It is not going to be easy, but that is how we're going to make a difference. We talk about being world changers, but how can we hope to change the world if we're like the world? We can't. I believe we all have the ability to change the world, but our definition of truth is going to determine the future. Are we willing to defy our generation and stand firm in the absolute truth of Jesus Christ?